Hi there, this is Ian Buckley with MakeUseOf.com and today we are looking at VS LiveShare. LiveShare is a collaborative coding thing from Microsoft which is fantastic. Um, it works with VS Code, it works with Visual Studio, it allows you to code in real time. Uh, you can see what other people are typing, you can see what other people are highlighting, you can talk to them in audio calls and you can even put your Slack and Discord server into Visual Studio so you just have the one window. Um, it works for Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. Today we'll just be concentrating on Visual Studio Code. So let's get started. If you haven't already got it, download Visual Studio Code. It's free, it's from Microsoft, and it's a fantastic little IDE. Uh, you can download it for Windows or for Mac. Um, just a quick note, if you are on Linux and you're following this tutorial, you will also want to look at the Linux installation details that are available on the Visual Studio docs, as using Live Share with Linux is a little more complicated. But for now, if you're using Windows or Mac, download it and let's get started. When you open Visual Studio Code, you'll be shown the welcome screen. On the left side here, this little square is the extensions menu. Um, if you open this up and search the extension marketplace for VS Live Share, you will be shown you get VS Live Share and also the VS Live Share extension pack. Um, now, I think they fixed this, but a while ago when I did this, you had to install the VS Live Share pack, wait for it to be installed, and then install the Share extension pack. Um, I don't know if that's been fixed, but that's just the way I'm going to do it. And um, you'll notice that when I clicked install on the extension pack that it automatically installed the audio pack and the team chat for Slack and Discord. Um, this is just simply because their dependencies of the extension pack just kind of makes it a bit easier. You only need to download those two. Uh, when they are both installed, you're ready to keep going. Depending on which version of Visual Studio Code you have, you may be prompted to reload at this point once you have installed both of these extensions. Um, you'll know there'll just be a little button here that says reload, click it, and, VS, uh, and uh, Visual Studio Code just automatically quickly reloads itself so that the extensions can start to work. To set up a live share, head to the live share panel. That's this logo just below the extensions panel. And uh, under the session details, to start a collaboration session, you click start collaboration session. Now, it will ask you to open a folder if you don't already have one open in, in which to work. This is just a project you'll be working on or will want to work on with someone else. So um, I happen to have this neural network folder that I'm going to open um, and uh, I definitely need help with it. I don't understand neural networks. So let's get someone else involved to help. It will automatically try to start a collaboration session. Now, when it says signing in, um, what this means is that you are getting signed into either your Microsoft account or your GitHub account. Um, if you're not automatically signed into one of those things on your computer already, you will be prompted to go to the browser and sign into one or the other. Um, as far as I know, uh, that is a definite. You have to have a Microsoft account or a GitHub account in order to use Visual Studio Live Share. Once you start a collaboration session, you will see this window. Um, it just shows you that you copied the link to your clipboard. Uh, this is the link that you give to people who you trust, who you want to work with you. Um, I noticed a few times it didn't copy to the clipboard, but that's fine. You can simply click copy again. This also is where you have the opportunity to make it read only. This means that anyone that joins can't make any changes. And if you click more info, you will be shown the VS Live Share welcome page, which also has another version of the link here, along with some extra information. When someone joins your live share, you'll receive a notification and they will be added to the chat channel. Now, uh, Sebastian is signed in and he's someone who I do want to be able to edit my code. Um, and so he will be able to make changes. Uh, he can also chat in the chat window. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow Sebastian so he can have a look at my code and also have a look at my to do list. So the way this happens is under the session details window in the participants menu, you'll notice there is a little circle next to Sebastian's name. If I click on this circle, it will become filled and that will mean I'm following him. And as you see, I instantly jump to where he is in the code. So he is having, he's now having a look at the code and um, as you'll see, anything he highlights, I can see highlighted in his cursor number. Anything he types, I will also see in real time, although it appears that my code is good enough for him and he isn't going to change anything. If he decides to look at anything else, so for example, the to-do, um, if he clicks that, I will end up seeing that too. I will be pulled from file to file with him. The following means essentially you follow them throughout your project. And the same would happen as if he was to click on my name. Now, if I wanted to get his attention, I can use in the session menu, the little focus participants button, which will send a request to them saying, you're being requested to come back to the window that the person who's running the session has. Uh, and this is me saying, okay, this is gonna be a little bit too hard for text. Let's start a call instead. And this call um, is, on the session menu once again under audio call. 
Now you can set it up so an audio call automatically happens every time you start a live share. In this case, I didn't, but simply select start audio call and Sebastian will be able to join that too. If you need to configure your audio, you can go next to the audio call participants and click on the cogwheel. This will open the audio menu where you can change your microphone, change your speakers or headphones, view participants or mute yourself. Um, although the configuration is the only thing that you need from this menu, the rest you can actually do in the session details window, um, much like closing the call like you would um, if you were to press that button. Uh, if you want to kick someone from the live share session, you can do that by pressing the cross next to their name. And if you want to end the live share session, you simply on the session details window, click the little thing that looks a little bit like a no entry sign and that will stop the live share session. Sometimes folks might want to join your session in read only mode. So um, when they open the link, they have the opportunity if they're not signed in already to Microsoft or GitHub to join as just a read only guest. Um, they get to enter a name. Um, and uh, what this basically means is if you accept it, um, they will enter the chat channel. Uh, you can say hello to them. And um, Colin, who is me on my other laptop, can also say hello back again. However, if I was to open up some code, um, for example, this neural network code that I do not understand in the slightest, um, if Colin uh, enters this channel and tries to change it, he can't. Uh, you can't see uh, him here. Um, no matter where I click in the code, you cannot see. Um, as you're about to see, however, if you're actually collaborating with someone, it's completely different. Visual Studio Code can also work with Discord and Slack integrated into it. So we're gonna start by setting up Discord. Now you're gonna need your API authorization key for your Discord server. Be very careful with who you give this to. Um, people can cause great problems uh, if they have this, as it says here, if they have full access to your account. Um, this site here, discordhelp.net slash discord dash token. You can also find this in the VS Live Share extension instructions. Um, this will tell you how to get that key. Back in Visual Studio Code, if you hold Control, Shift, and P, it will open this window. And as you can see, I've done this recently. If you type chat, configure access token, and press Enter, it will say select a provider. I'm going to select Discord, and I'm going to enter my token here. Um, if it wasn't already there, it would now give you your Discord logo at the side. And if I click on this and go to Channel More, you will see that one of the channels in my Discord is now in Visual Live Share. And anything that I type in here will go into the Discord. Hello, Discord. I don't think anyone is there at the minute. It's not a very popular Discord, but it does seem like people like it quite a lot. Setting up Slack in Visual Studio Code is very similar to setting up Discord. Hold down Control, Shift, and P, and then search for Slack. Now, um, you want this option, chat, sign in with Slack. Uh, you will need to be an administrator of your Slack workspace because you need to authorize the app. If I press Enter here, it will take me to the Slack sign-in page where I would sign into my Slack. Um, I'm not going to do it because I know I'm not an administrator and I can't authorize the app. However, once you do do that, if someone does authorize it for you um, or you are uh, the administrator, it will show up much like the Discord channel and it's very similar to this. It just gives you another option for chatting within Visual Studio Code. So this is VS Live Share. If you are someone who is learning coding or someone who is coding as part of a team, this will almost certainly be useful to you. If you're not already using a collaborative code program, this seems like a pretty simple one to get started. Um, there's a full article for this on the Make Use Of website. Uh, please do go there and check it out. Uh, also, if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do. We have tech tips and giveaways every week along with tutorials like this. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Take care.